So I am doing this on a Zoom. I see people on our Zoom and on Facebook Live. Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is Friday. This is not crypto talk. This is education time, though. Very big education. And this is going to be beneficial no matter what you do. If you're in the crypto space, if you're in the direct selling space, if you're in the health and wellness, digital, it doesn't matter. I mean, these lessons will benefit you in anything. And, uh, and this is based on my own personal experience. So first and foremost, I'm very big on Three Course Crypto. The book I'm talking about, and you can get this for free. You go to my website, threecoursecrypto.com, click on courses and scroll down. And you see the free ebook, Five Steps to Launching Your Business. Five Steps to Launching Your Business. Now, this isn't hearsay. This isn't hand-me-down information. This is based on personal experience. So let's qualify this first. My very first entry into the direct selling space, I was a senior at Morehouse College, 1998. Uh, my first company was called ACN at the time. 20, I just turned 22 years old uh, that year. And I, I had no network, meaning as far as, you know, I'm, I'm still in college. My network was my, my family friends and 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 my college buddies that was my network no none of us i mean at that time were wealthy or rich had in money or anything uh and it was a it was a digital based company that was offering long distance so uh not even cell phone service long distance home service was what we were marketing at the time and i was blown away by the presentations by the people that i met by the things that I saw. And one of the first mentors said something important that stuck to me. And he said, Brandon, if you want to have success, find somebody that's successful at what you're doing, duplicate exactly what they do, and do a little bit more. You got to be kidding me. Am I still live on Facebook? Let me share my screen. It's not actually, it's not even Facebook doing this one. That was Zoom. So if you guys can still see me on uh, Facebook, type Y in the chat box. I don't do this often, and now they want to mess with me. So if you can hear me on Facebook, type Y in the chat box. I know on Zoom, we should still be good. In fact, uh, let me make sure I even have the chat box on. Yeah, I got the chat box on. Shaughnessy's outcast. Yeah, all right. Come on now, Zoom and Facebook. Don't mess with me today. I'm going to be dropping some serious information. Some good knowledge here. Like I was saying, uh, that stuck with me. And I started to observe successful people in the industry. And I noticed something. And I don't know if this is, if they are either purposely lying or they just don't know themselves. But I learned that they do and act differently than what they say, which led me to learn something else. I never listen to what people say. I watch what they do. It blew me away. Well, because I asked, I was I'm really, I'm like a sponge. I'm like, this dude is on stage saying one thing, but then is out there doing something different. Why are you lying to everybody? Or do you even realize it? Or are you just you just duplicating what you've been taught? I found it interesting, and, and, and I started asking some of these guys questions, and they were like, some of them were flat out, I never give all of my secrets away. I just give the basics. Another person that I had a lot of respect told me this. He said, Brandon, the reason is because most of the people are not even qualified to know this information. And that's what began me on my journey of the secrets, understanding and learning the laws of the universe, figuring out that uh, when they tell you to read certain books like Think and Grow Rich, that Think and Grow Rich is nothing but a movie preview of the real deal. Imagine, imagine a new movie coming out like Star Wars coming out, and you don't see the movie. You just see the trailer, and you think you're getting all the info. You only saw a trailer because the real info was not allowed to even be circulated. Now, if you understand the history of Napoleon Hill, 
and and Henry Ford. Henry Ford made him pull all that stuff off the shelves on his first draft because he he said certain words in his book, vibration and attraction. He said, oh, no, you got to pull that off because these people are not qualified to have the information. And I didn't know at the time I, I, I took offense to that. I'm like, who are you to to say whether these people are qualified or not? Give them the information and let and let's see who stands up for it. But I, I, I found that out, you know, my first 10 years, I didn't have success at all. You know, I learned a lot, but I wasn't having success because I was following their teaching, not what they were actually doing. It took, yeah, 10 years for the light bulb switch to go on my, off of my head. The one thing that I, I did see that's a common denominator on every single person that has success in really almost in life, they've mastered the art of telling their story. And they understand that people don't like to be sold. They like to buy. So they people are buying them and not the company or the product. They sell their story. You listen to Les Brown. How many times have you heard Les Brown's story? He talked about his mama, his twin brother. He talks about when he made his big break on the radio station. Tony Robbins talks about his story. Jim Rohn talks about his story. All of them do Zig Ziglar. So I, I did find that, but after having success, I wrote the book. And I actually put this into practice. I'm putting it into practice right now. You know, those of you off on my email list, you saw an email this morning or if in my groups, about our last 30 days progress in the new opportunity that we're in right now. I am following the steps of my book to a T and I'm giving this away for free. And maybe I should put a money charge on it because if I, if people pay for it, they take it more seriously. You know, they, they put more value on something they pay for. But that's the interesting thing. Another mentor told me, said, Brandon, getting rich is 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 easy getting rich is easy i mean the game plan is easy it's just that people aren't willing to do the work they're not willing to follow the simple steps it's out there it's not hidden there is no real secret that the biggest secret is that there is no secret <laughs> that's, that's that's interesting to say and every year at the end of the year i do one training at the last day december 31st or so called the secret. So I'm I'm getting ready to do that. You can go on YouTube and look it up. I do it once every year. So I'm doing it again this year. The secret. Anyways, let's talk about the five steps to launching your business. And I'm going to actually pull up the book. And this is Friday. This is my day off. So I can I'm going to take as much time as I want. This is not long. It's 12 short pages. Because it's not it's not I mean it's not a complicated process. Now, it's one thing learning how to read, and there's another thing understanding what you're reading. So I'm going to read this and give my commentary on it at the same time, for those of you that's already read this. A simple guide to getting started right in your online business. Five steps to launching your business, written by me, Bitcoin Brandon. List building. I got to tell you right now, your money is in your list. The money is in your list, in any field, in any industry, whatever it is that you do. The money's in the list. Make your list. Congratulations, you have now made the wise decision of having your own business. This decision alone sets you apart from 97% of the population who is still relying on a nine to five job for financial security. The only way to achieve financial security is to take charge of it yourself. Interesting. I wrote this book before I got into crypto. Huh. I might need to make some adjustments. To have success in network marketing, there are only two things that you do, and that is to sell the product and build a team of people who sell the product. <laughs> That's it. Under both cases, you need people to talk to. So the first thing you do 
is make a list of everyone that you know. Isn't that what they teach us? Make a list of everyone you know. Traditionally, this is friends, family, and acquaintances. So if you join any company, you go to their first training, some guru clown on stage, this is the first thing they tell you. Traditional training would tell you to contact these people and try to get them to join your business. This is not the correct thing to do. Remember this. Friends and family will not get you rich. If that were true, then you would already have financial security. Chances are the people around you are in the same situation as you, maybe slightly better or slightly worse. See, birds of a feather flock together. But these same people have not made the mental shift that you have yet, and you cannot force them. So when you join a business, you're excited. You saw something fantastic. You got a presentation that blew you away. You saw people making money. You want to go back and tell your friends and family, you know what they're going to do? They're going to look at you like you lost your damn mind. I'm like, get out of here with that. My, I heard about something like that. A cousin did something like that. I have a friend that lost all their money in that. You better not get involved with that scam, that Ponzi. They didn't see what you saw. And then you get immediately deflated, like, man, maybe I shouldn't do this. You let somebody that didn't see what you see talk you out of what you're doing because you approached them the wrong way. So instead of attempting to get them in your business, your job is simply to notify them that you have started your own business and ask them to support your business by either becoming a customer to try the product or ask for referrals. This way you are not putting pressure on family members to join yet at the same time you are exposing your business to them. I never, never approach people and ask them to join my business. My cousin Marnita is listening to me right now. She got me this Hamilton shirt. Marnita, did I ever come to you and say, Marnita, do you want to get into crypto? Marnita, do you want to compound interest your business? Marnita, do you want to get into digital franchise? I don't do that. So how do I do it? I don't recruit. But let's continue this because I got I haven't read this book in – Maybe two years, even though I wrote it. It's been about two years. This is the first time I'm reading it in two years. So I'm gonna, I gotta make sure if, I, if I'm about to read something that I'm about to say anyway. So, so this way you are not putting pressure on family members to join at yet the same time you're exposing your business to them. People like to buy. They don't like to be sold. You will be surprised by how many people ask you for more information for themselves. The real money in your business is going to come from you learning marketing skills so that you will attract, that's the key word there, attract people to you and your business. You know, I could do a, I could do a course on this and charge $5,000. You got to understand the, the value of this type of information so that you will attract people to you in your business, instead of chasing people down, but that's for another training. I got people out there right now that's going to people on my list, in my network, and they know they're in my network, sending them direct messages, trying to pitch them on another opportunity. <laughs> I didn't even go to the people in my network and do that. But hey. So you want to attract people to you and your business instead of chasing people down. Tell your story. I might need to write another book and expand on this stuff. I'll charge that. Make, let this be like the uh, Napoleon Hill's book. And then come out with like 12 laws. Anyways, tell your story. You join your business for a reason, and that story needs to be shared. People do not care about your company or products. 
What they care about is what it is doing for you. Why did you join? And could it be an answer to their problems? Outside of social media, we do not walk around with our problems on our sleeves. The best way to break down other people's barriers is to show who you are and where you come from. What is your story? What problem did you have in your life? How is this going to solve your problem? By sharing your story, people can relate if they are in a similar situation. By sharing your solution, people will believe that your solution can be their solution. In more advanced training, you will learn the feel, felt, found method of telling your story. I have many videos on YouTube about that. Feel, felt, found. I'm not trying to solve your problem. I am sharing how I solved my problem. And then people can relate. Go, you know what? Your situation is like mine. I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of not having $1,000 on my savings account. I'm worried about getting fired or laid off. But now you're living the flip-flop lifestyle. You fired your boss. You, you work from home. How'd you do that? How'd you solve that problem? See, that is a much better story than me coming out bragging about my lifestyle and saying, hey, you got to be like me. Stop what you're doing, drop what you're doing, and do what I'm doing so that you can make money like me. That's a turnoff to people. You see this on Facebook all the time or Twitter or YouTube or Instagram. People showing off and, and, and you know, the life. And it's almost like they're degrading you because you're not living the life that they are. The only way you're going to live their life is if you stop what you're doing and join their program. If that's how you market, you're never going to get anywhere. You're never going to get anywhere. That's a turnoff to people. Every single six and seven figure earner in this industry has mastered the art of sharing their story. And they talk about their story far more than they do their product or business. They master sharing their story with as many people as possible. When I first started doing presentations, when you do presentations, there's an art to it. A beginning, like writing a, writing a, 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 um, an essay. You've got your beginning, you've got your, your intro, your, your middle, and your closing, your end. And the beginning is how you relate to people. You let them know who are you, where do you come from, what are you about. My very first story, I, I was only 22 years old, so I didn't have a story yet. It was, hey, you know, I just graduated from college. I already got laid off, and I just graduated right now, and I don't want to be in that situation where, like, my, 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 my parents' generation, they worked all their lives, and they're retiring broke. You know, people can relate to that. I did what you guys I, I told. I did what you told me to do. I, I, I graduated from college, but I graduated. Now I'm in debt, and I can't get a job. That was my story at the time. It's different today. Since I've made seven figures, I've lost seven figures. Even in the crypto space, I tell people my story, how I got started. I saw people making millions of dollars. I started asking them questions. How did you do that? They didn't even know what Bitcoin was. All their answer was that Bitcoin keeps going up. So I started doing my own research. I started trying to figure this thing out. I was on the verge of having to go back and get another job. I even have a picture. Shauna Ross is listed in, and she saw the picture. I think she was one of the first I showed of me wearing the shirt because I was about to go be a salesman. I hadn't had a job in like six years for the first time. I was about to go on a job. On my first day, I quit. I didn't even go into the job. I took that thing off and said, hell no. But I was that close to getting a job. And I got started in the crypto space with 30 bucks. And I flipped that $30 into six figures in less than four months. Had I got on that job, I would have made in the same period of time, I think, twelve to $15,000 if I went on that job, spending 40 to 60 hours a week. Instead, six figures working from home in the crypto space. That's my story. And so when people hear that, they think, wow, if Brandon can do that, I can do that. I didn't say you need to join me to be like me. Share your story. This is the one thing I also find that people have the most difficult thing about. I ask them, tell me your story. What are you about? And they're like, ah, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Master telling your story. People need to hear it. 
Success is not measured by money. This is another thing broke people don't get and don't understand. Money won't create success. The freedom to make it will, says Nelson Mandela. Do you know my biggest freedom day? It was not when I made seven figures. My, my, the, the best feeling I ever had in my life, outside of, you know, family, kids, and all that, was on July 13th, 2012. And then July 16th, 13th, 14th, yeah, 16th, 2012. Why those two days? July 13th fell on a Friday. And that was the day I walked into my job. I had shorts and a flip flop on, flip flops on. And they looked at me like I was crazy. And I was making three times more money than my boss was in my own home based business. And I quit, walked off my job, fired my boss. And I remember my boss set me, pulled me in the office and was like trying to convince me if this was the right decision. He was like, you know, I did, you know, Amway back in the day, and they got me all hyped up in the training and stuff, and, and you know, I gave it a try and a shot, and, you know, I had ended up having family hated me. I had all this product I couldn't sell, and I just got let down. He goes, are you sure you want to you do all that? And I'm just looking at him like, you must have lost your dog all mind. <laughs> I'm out of here. But... It wasn't the, 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 the sweet feeling I had was that I no longer have to answer to a time clock, to a boss, to somebody that I have a, that doesn't even have the same education I have, somebody that doesn't have the morals that I have. I don't have to be reprimanded, ask for permission to go to the bathroom. Be away from, I think my youngest son at that time was three or four years old. All he remembers is me working from home. He doesn't remember me ever having a job, my youngest son, and he's 13. And that going home that Friday was sweet, but even sweeter was Monday morning because you know how you're in habits and you're used to your body wakes up without even the alarm clock and you go through the emotions. Let me get my cup of coffee. Let me get my breakfast, get dressed. Let me get ready to go into rush hour traffic, go to a job I don't like to work with people I can't stand to eat lunch at 12 and I'm hungry at 11 to ask for permission to go to the bathroom as if I'm a child, knowing I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. You guys know the rat race. The sweetest feeling was on Monday. My body woke up at the normal time I would to get ready for work. And then I was able to close my eyes and go right back to sleep, knowing I didn't have to go to my job that day. That was one of the sweetest feelings in the world. It's something I believe every single one of you should experience at least once. Because once you experience that, you will move heaven on earth to keep it. People say, Brent, how can you be motivated working from home? I think about having to get back up going to a job. So success wasn't measured by money. It was, it was by my freedom. A satisfied customer is the best business strategy of all. This is for those product-based people. Your success and long-term success will be able to create testimonials. Again, it's not what people say. It's how pe what people feel. You, testimonials give you that emotion. The most uh, uh, immovable force in the world, in the universe, is emotions. Emotions will always outweigh facts. Emotions will always outweigh logic. It doesn't matter if, if one thing is true, logical, and factual. Your emotions will outweigh that for you to do something different and go on a different path. So if you can create an emotional attachment to whatever it is you're trying to sell, your product, you will have a repeat customer. When you start to market your business, it is wise to understand your product. And no better way to understand your product than by being a customer or a consumer of your own product. Think about it. Does the owner of McDonald's eat at Burger King across the street? I can't tell you how many times I've seen people join a company and never use their own product. I'm like, what the hell? Why are you even here? 
How are you going to sell something you're not using for yourself? People ask, how is it working for you? Here's a good example. I posted, I'm, I believe in being fully transparent. We've been in our program, one of the platforms we're in for, for one month. So I understand when you start something, you want to launch it. You want to have immediate success so that you can turn around and show it off. Show what you've done. What is done for you. What is, let me give you two examples. Let's say, and I'm going to use the compound interest program as an example. Let's say you get started, right? I'm going to get my feet wet. I'm going to put about 250 down. I just want to see if it works. And then after 30 days, you know, you realize, yeah, I made some money. I made profit. And then you want to start talking to some people about it. That's not launching your business because people are, well, how much money have you made? What has it done for you? Well, I actually, you know, haven't really begun yet. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just kind of testing it out, whatever. Do you think somebody else is going to be excited about that? What if you tell somebody this now? Because we haven't begun to even market our business yet. We wanted to create a success story first so that we have a story to tell. So we launched. I already have more than $10,000 in the account. Why? Because that's what it takes to earn through infinity. That's what it takes. If they did they did 8% last month, so I can show, oh, yeah, I did uh, 800 bucks in profit just off the trading. I made more than $7,000 in bonuses in the first 30 days, and we haven't even begun to market yet. We've got more than 200 people on the team. That is launching your business. So all the looky-loos on the sideline that want to see if somebody else can do it first because they're not willing to take the risk themselves, wow, if Brandon did it, he proved it. He's got the evidence. He launched his business. He can show me how to do the same thing. So in the month of November, is going to be twice as big as October because we launched the business. We didn't just get our feet wet in the business. Do you understand the difference here? Seven-figure earners understand this. And if you're in the mind frame, I want to be a seven-figure earner, why are you playing around with 250 bucks? <laughs> now, I still understand. Only use money you can afford to lose, and that goes for anything. You're taking a risk as an entrepreneur. And understand that when you take risks, you will lose somewhere along the way. I've lost – someone asked me this question. Brendan, how much money have you lost in the crypto space? Or even, even better yet, how much money have you lost in the direct selling space over the last 22 years? And I really thought about that. I know I lost uh, close to 75K in crypto. I've spent six figures on my personal development, which is priceless, but on money, uh, on companies that either, either it turned out where the owner scammed everybody or they run out of business, maybe a quarter of a million dollars I've lost in this space. The average person couldn't even fathom that because they're afraid of losing something, so they're not willing to take the risk. But if I've lost a quarter of a million, how much did I make? See the difference here? So anyways, I went off on a tangent there because I'm telling you guys, you want something big. You want to be a seven-figure earner, but you've got a, a nine-to-five job mentality. I'm just going to bomb up, put $200 down to see what happens. You'll never be a seven-figure earner. I'll say this. There's one series when I have my aha moment. I read or I listened to an audio series from Kevin Trudeau called Your Wish is Your Command. Is he still in jail? <laughs> I wonder if he's out now. Your Wish is Your Command. And he shared a story about he was in New York listening to, I don't know if it was real estate or what, what they were doing, listening to an expert. And the expert was talking about, you know, those of you who take my course, out of 10 people that take my course, eight of you will make $1 million in, tw in the next 12 months. The other two will still make at least six figures. But eight out of 10 of you will make $1 million in the next 12 months. I'm offering my course next weekend. It's going to be in San Diego, California. And the course costs $5,000 for the weekend. 
So he told a room full of people in New York. And Kevin was sitting there saying, wow, I want to do that. But one, I got to go to San Diego. And two, $5,000, I don't have $5,000. And the guy said, and that's why you'll never become a seven-figure earner. He found the $5,000, went to San Diego, and he made more than seven figures, a million dollars in the next 12 months. There's a shift in your mindset between a, a nine to five job, rat race, living paycheck to paycheck, than doing what successful millionaires do, what their risks they're willing to take. They gotta be ready, ready to risk losing it all to gain everything. All right, that was off on a tangent. So anyway, let me get let me get back to the book. We are, I lost my track. So when you start to market your business, it is wise to understand your product. And no better way to understand your product than being a customer or a consumer of your own product. If you went to a restaurant and asked the owner or waiter what is good on the menu and they said, I don't know, I eat at the restaurant across the street, would you be comfortable ordering that food? Same thing applies to your business. If you attempt to sell your product and your customer asks you questions about it, you want to be able to share your testimony. You want people to know how the product has worked for you and how excited you are about it. When you become a consumer of your own product and you are excited about it, then it becomes easy to share with other people and you will be genuine. You truly believe your product will be helpful to other people because it is beneficial to you. This is why it is important to be passionate about the business you choose to join. Excitement sells. People, if you set yourself on fire, people will show up just to watch you burn. They don't even know why, what's going on. They just know something's happening over here. That's another reason why it's important to launch your business. If you're just tiptoeing in and then you decide, I'm going to start telling people about it, they're like, ain't nothing going on over there. You made, what, $8, 15 bucks in 30 days? That's not exciting. But what if you could say, well, I, made, I made more than $7,000 in the last 30 days. We're rocking with this. I'm excited about this. Excitement is contagious. Other people will get excited about it. If you're not excited about it, nobody else will be excited about it. You know, if you're dull and, do and, and, and uh, dull and boring, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, let me, st let me tell you about my uh, juice product. Uh, it's supposed to make you feel real good if you take it. And it's got like these certain berries in it. And nobody wants to hear that. What do you say? Man, I took that juice last night. I woke up on fire this morning. Man, I love this product. What? Tell me more about it. What is it about? This coffee is the business. <laughs> this weight loss product, I lost 40 pounds over the last 60 days from using this product. Really? Yeah, you want to hear about it? I made a video years ago about a guru in the industry that is exactly what I talk about. They don't, they don't, they don't do what they preach. And this dude hopped around from company to company to company, all health and wellness products. And he's been overweight for five years. And I'm like, how the hell have you been in three health and wellness products, weight loss companies, and you ain't ever looking no healthier, buddy? <laughs> all right, anyways, let me not go down that road. Attend all events and training. See, I took it when, when I first got started, there was no internet like it is today. There was no Zoom calls and corporate calls we can call in on and, and all of that stuff. When I was in ACN in Atlanta, the first meeting I went to, it was snowing. And my, my, my um, sponsor was named Rob Brown. I don't know if Victor Huff's on here. Victor Huff from Atlanta was our upline. Rob had a, a, a two-door car, and it had a back seat, but the back seat was so small. And Rob packed five of us, five of us Morehouse dudes, in this little car. 
and it was snowing and cold as hell. I'm from California. I don't like being in the cold. And he drove us to the meeting in the cold down in College Park, right by Hartsfield Airport. And that was the first meeting we went to. And I remember walking in there and everybody was suited and booted. And it was, I mean, it was like every week people would go to that meeting like like they was going to the club. (laughs) You showed up dressed to impress. But we left the house and I moved to California. And I live in Laverne, California when I came back home. And the only closest ACN meeting was by the LAX airport off of Century Boulevard. And I had to get, when I got off work, drive in rush hour traffic, it would take an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes just to get there on a Thursday night. I would invite people and hope one or two guests would show up. And I did that every week, paid for the clothes, paid for the gas to show up, paid the fees for the, I mean, it was like members had to pay five or ten dollars you know to pay for the room this is the good old days and we we fill that room up rain sleet or snow and then we had sat we called them super saturdays on a saturday morning drive down to get trained and then we would have conventions once every quarter so you had a super saturday every four times a month and then a convention once a month and somewhere around the country I think my first one was Atlanta, then Long Beach, then there was one in Philly, then there was Columbus. I remember 9-11. Where were we? Were we in De- I think we were in Detroit the weekend before 9-11. I flew home on 9-10, September 10th, 2001. The day before 9-11 happened, we just came back from a convention. And we were broke as a joke in those days. We would pack our hotel rooms. I remember we went to a Santa Clara convention. And we we rented two vans, packed everybody in L.A. in, drove up there, and we only had two rooms. We had one room for the women and one room for the men. And we all packed up in those rooms just to be at the convention. I miss those good old days because it built character. I was giving something up to receive something back. It's so easy now. You don't have to roll out of your bed. You just open up your laptop and you're into a presentation. There's no sacrifice today. But back in those days, I never failed to show up. Today, if there's a webinar presentation, I'm on it. Rather, I'm the one doing them now. Not only am I showing up, I do the presentation. I can't can't stress the importance of Showing up. Remember G.I. Joe back in the in the 80s said showing up is half or knowing is half the battle. You don't know if you don't show up. Show up. We cannot control what other people do. We cannot make people buy our product or join our business. However, we have full control over what we do personally. If we fail to control what we can do, then everything else will collapse. Chances are your company is providing business presentations and trainings that you can participate in. The great companies will host live events and conventions several times a year to train their affiliates. It is in the company's best interest to have a trained sales force. The more money you make, the more money they make. Find out when and where all the presentations, trainings, and conventions are going to be. My sign of somebody that I know they're not going to make it. Is when they're constantly asking me, when is the next presentation? That lets me know you don't even have a notebook down where you've written the schedule out for yourself. You're relying on somebody else to tell you when it's going to be. I had notebooks for the days back then. I knew exactly when presentations were taking place. I didn't need to have to ask somebody when's the next one. Give me the schedule. I know what to do. I planned out. Three three weeks, four weeks out, oh, I need to have 10 people on this presentation. I need to make sure my goal is to have 20 people on that presentation, not just show up myself, but if I don't have a guest, I'm still showing up. Back in the day, we said, if you don't have a guest, the presentation needs you. If you have a guest, you need the presentation. Why? Because we played team. 
if your guest shows up and ain't nobody there, your guest is like, there's nothing happening over here. But if your guest shows up and sees a full a room full of excited people, they're like, man, I want to be a part of this. Show me the party. Look what's going on in Philadelphia right now. They're partying in the freaking streets, literally. Got to play team. Even if you don't, Brandon, why do I need to go to the presentation? I've seen you do that same presentation 10 times. Then my question is, can you do the presentation? No, then you got to keep showing up until you can. I never missed it. Make a commitment to attend everything you possibly can. This is how you learn. You soak it in. Your subconscious is soaking it in. Because what happens is when you start to speak to other people, you hearing this information over and over and over again, your, your brain gets the language, and you start saying the same things to your people. I figured that one out early on. When I started, the first time I started to talk to people, I was like, oh, man, I, I was shocked and surprised. The words are coming out of my mouth from what I've been hearing for the last four months. <laughs> so make a commitment to attend everything you possibly can. The more events you attend, the more you learn and grow, and your business will grow as well. Personal development. Oh, I can't. Uh, what did I write about this? Small business. Oh, oh yeah. Personal development. Five steps. Okay. Personal development and self improvement is the backbone of your business. I can't stress that enough. This is the fuel that makes everything go. This is what you have been trained all your life since elementary school to follow a certain path, and that path is to become an employee. There is no school that teaches you how to become an entrepreneur. To be successful in networking, network marketing, or direct sales, you definitely need to have a mental shift and be willing to learn new things. We spend thousands of dollars on a college education just to get a job. You must be willing to invest in yourself in time and money to learn the skills necessary to become successful in this industry. The very first book you should read is your first year in network marketing by Mark Yarnell. Follow that up with Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And third is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Of course, there are a lot more reading sources, but you begin with these. You will soon hear of giants like Jim Rohn, Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, John C. Maxwell, and Tony Robbins. Success leaves clues. And these five steps are just the beginning of what successful people in network marketing have mastered. Become a professional network marker, marketer. The walk to freedom is yours to take. Now go out and be successful. Wow, now that I think about it, I can write a 100-page book on this, expand on every little – each segment. Each one of these, I can talk for a whole day just on each one of these topics. So that's all. Oh, okay, now I understand why I gave the book away for free because I am going to write another more detailed one. So this is I – would, I would say this is a preview. That's why it's called Getting Started Right. This is a, a good basic roadmap. And I hope that me giving you commentary on it gives you a little bit more. For those of you that have already read this, um, I'm actually going to take this video and I'm going to put it on my website as well. So not only can you download the book, but you can also watch the video of me reading the book and breaking certain things down. And I'm going to, now that I've read it again, I'm going to expand on this stuff next year. I got too many projects to work on. I wrote another book called Your First Year in Cryptocurrency that I'll release next year. Uh, but too many things and things I need to do before I get to that point. But I hope this was made sense to you guys, was a little bit of value. You can go again if you came on late, how to get this book. Go to... 3coursecrypto.com, select courses, scroll down, and you can download the free ebook. And then put this into practice. This is exactly what we're doing right now.